this will be in podcast form so you can just press play and let it go while you work list or whatever are driving all right this is going to be a good one so stay tuned hey this is Glendon with another episode of mental Mondays. what we're going to talk about today is fear venting it's a little strange Different kind of concept, but hear me out. I was on a consult call with someone that's been part of the G-verse for three years. Storage auction buyer out there making it, doing pretty well. And this person has hit a ceiling. And I go through the checklist because with four years of doing this, writing the books, doing webinars and teaching people, I am no longer surprised when people are not following all of the advice that I've been given since 2009. So we go through the exploratory process of what is, what is not, what are you doing, where are you? And this person has a warehouse, check. Person has a box truck, check. This person is only doing Craigslist, garage sales, flea market. And they do around 10000 a month net profit. Big storage auction buyer in their neck of the woods. And I was just ready to beat my head. I was like, okay, let me get this straight. You're not doing Amazon. You're not doing Etsy. You're not doing eBay. And understand, I recommend eBay with a certain level of caution. But... I call it the necessary evil because for some items, it's the best place to get good coin. So we go through this thing and I'm like pushing and pushing. I'm like, why are you doing this? You are losing thousands of dollars per month. Then this person fessed up, said they were afraid of online, not very computer savvy and knew that they read. They bought one of the first books, gone through it 20 times, reread it. Just He said it was dog eared. And I said, okay, what, let's, let's just go through this process. What is scaring you so much? It's like you can get ripped off. It's like you can get ripped off in the story. It's like, yeah, people stolen stuff out of the warehouse. It happens. So this person had a tremendous amount of fear of, of the Internet, accepting credit cards. And as I got off the phone with this person, And this actually happened some months ago. This was not a recent development. I'm doing this as a mental Monday because of the conclusion. So I got off the phone and I was like, okay, we got to do something better because this person is literally leaving money on the table. So I call him back up and this is something that I do for some people. I don't do it for everyone. It's just if I'm so inclined, I said, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to sit down with you. We're going to work out a different program. You're going to pay me on the back end. You're not going to pay me on the front end because I have faith in you. So we started going through these series of exercises to, you know, because the thing is frequently people know what they need to do. They already know it's no mystery. It's not something out of the wood. There's no, you don't need a voodoo priest to come in and throw some chicken bones out there to let you know what the deal is. So we already know. And then the problem is why isn't this person going forward with this endeavor? That's the tricky part. So what I'm going to give you is the exercise. And this is why I call it fear venting. So we sat down and we talked about some stuff and it comes out, you know, and this is why I love doing consults because many times people come to me and it's like, Hey, Glendon, what can I do to make $5,000? All I have is a query in an email. I know nothing about this person. I can give the same advice to 10 different people and have 10 different outcomes based upon where they are in life, their work ethic, So many variables, and it's a dangerous thing. And that's why I don't give out certain advice on YouTube because the wrong people could take it and really create damage to their lives. So we go through it. Person is a little challenged academically. Uh, Didn't do well in school. One of the fears was that the Internet's for smart people because if you see Internet marketers, they're always saying, like, I had my college degree, blah, 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 blah. And that's like, well, there's a whole group of folks who's like, I didn't have nothing. I was homeless. It's like, yeah, but... He knows a few people who are doing okay online and they're college graduates. So we go right there. All right, so we're we're breaking down 
the layers of fear. Because the thing is, you have to identify exactly what the fear is. Not exactly what the fear you think the fear is, but exactly what the fear is. So in a nutshell, once we got down to it, because the person is smart. He built a business that's making 10 G's a month. He's not an idiot. So we identified it. He was afraid of being put in a position where he wasn't going to shine. He got in the storage auction business in 2009. I mean, he was probably one of the first 100 people to buy my ebook. So he got in early and he had success and he's been able to ride that success to higher and higher levels. But he had reached a point where he had became comfortable. So eBay, Amazon, all of these things are really, really they were real, really, really scary to him. So we identified that fear. You have to identify the exact fear. You can't like, well, it's kind of sort of this. That's not going to help you because you're going to continue to be stuck. So a fear of looking bad in front of people. That was it. I know it's, you know, it's not earth shattering. There was no childhood psychosis. His big fear was looking bad in front of people he respected. That was it. Because he was doing okay. And as long as he was doing okay, he felt comfortable with them because he was actually making more money than these people. It cracks me up what people value. But once again, this goes back to what I was talking about. Folks don't do things for money. There's other stuff that's there. There's those things that money can't buy. Respect, esteem, you know, a lot of stuff. So we went ahead and created this course. Identify. Then he had the face. And I was on the phone with him for an hour. And I said, okay, you're going to put something on eBay tonight. He said, what? You're going to put something on eBay tonight? You, you buy storage. So we went, he went around the warehouse. He found some stuff. Took a picture. Now, this is how we did it. One picture, one item, brief description, opened up the eBay account, opened up the PayPal account. And in 30 minutes, he had his first item on eBay. And within two days, it sold. So our process was not to go ahead and spend all, because you're already afraid of this stuff. So turn the overwhelm. So the whole deal was, for the next 30 days, one item a day you list on eBay, just to get used to it, just to learn. Also, one item a day on Amazon. So just these two things, Amazon, and then you know this person's now doing Etsy. So we, we went along with that. And he started having really fantastic success because as a storage auction buyer, you're going to get a lot of really cool eBay items. You're going to get a bunch of crap. You're going to get a bunch of stuff, but you're going to get a lot of eBay stuff. And that first month of doing that, it added $2,000 to his bottom line. Just the first month, one item a day on eBay and Amazon. But this is what we did. We set price points. Going back in the book, don't just slap anything up there. The items that he was putting on eBay were fifty to two hundred dollar items. So even if he just sold a few, you know, he just sold a few. His sell through rate was thirty eight percent. It still netted out, and then he started getting excited. And he started putting. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna put." And then this is what he did on it. I'm gonna put two things up, and then he started putting up ten things. And long story short, within three months, he doubled his income. So, he, you know, what I was saying is he was leaving thousands on the table. I had no idea because he had a lot of good stuff. And now he's moved on to Amazon FBA and he's really, really doing well. So going through the whole deal is you face your fears and you push daily instead of creating this super huge goal of I'm going to put 100 items up on eBay this week. If you're already afraid of it and you're already uncertain, that's just enough to paralyze you where actually nothing happens. So break down your fear. Okay, you're afraid of eBay. We're going to deal with one thing at a time and we're going to ease into this. We're going to ease into Amazon. And the reason that I'm doing this Mental Monday is I know there's a lot of people who are not doing these things just like him. In the new economy, you know, in my day, we were doing well with five to six income streams. Those income streams have been disruptive. As you know, I've created a new YouTube channel, The Disruptive Ninja. Those things have been disrupted. Uh, what I was able to do in the storage auction business for a damn near a decade, you can't do anymore because one, competition is up there. But even more importantly than the, com the competition, number one should be general awareness that many things have more value than you originally thought upon face value. That's the number one thing that is messing up every reseller 
if you're going out to garage sales, you're going to flea markets, people are aware they will have eBay prices on items in a flea market venue or a garage sale venue when those are the wrong places for it. But see, the thing is, they know. So push simple goals. And this is why we do simple goals. One thing a day doesn't sound like a lot, but it builds confidence and self-esteem. And it's not this huge departure from your normal walk of life. When you experience a lot of change, even if the change is good, it can it can mess you up. I read a study years and years ago, and it said that human beings were comfortable with roughly 8 to 10% change. Other than that, it gets a little scary. So 10%, you're good. 11%, you're freaking out. 20%, you might start drinking. I know it sounds crazy. And when I was working with Renecrate, and this is where I learned this, number one, you know, top five stressors, moving, getting married, graduation, birth of a child. And the one was change. Number one was change. Top five. And just big change is too much for the human condition. So instead of trying to beat yourself up over for something that's inherently a problem to begin with, learn how to increase your change range. I used to be like that. I grew up in Alabama, very conservative, little small town of Adamsville. Stuff stayed the same forever. My neighborhood did not radically start changing until maybe two years after I graduated high school and left. Uh, drugs were introduced to Birmingham, and then it just totally changed the complexion of the city. But I'm used to 50% change, 60% change, but I've had a decade or more to get used to it. If you're new, don't beat yourself up. Don't go crazy because you are making bold steps to improve your life. But understand, it can be daunting because even if the change is good, it's going to throw you. And that's one of the reasons that I loved Asian philosophy. I think it's chasm where you just improve every day. So you're not doing 10% or 11%. You're doing a half a percent. But the aggregate over a period of time is like a thousand percent. But since it's not pushing your change uh, alarms, you're growing and you're getting better. And that's one of the reasons that I took him on this path of one a day, then you know, who, you know, they, he may be doing 50 a day for all I know, but you, you got to get started because the first thing is, you know, just to give you a streamlined list, confront, identify, because so you got to confront it because if you don't confront it because you're like, I'm not scared of anything, you're not going to be able to identify it because you didn't confront it because it doesn't exist. So confront, identify or face then push through the change with a simple plan designed to increase your abilities to handle change. Now, the second leg of this is to practice pushing. Because if you're not used to pushing yourself, it's very easy to just like, you know, I experienced this in the gym. I just started going back to my real gym because I was doing yoga and other things. And there was tremendous benefits with yoga. But I have to psych myself up and have to go like just push because I'll do six reps, legs are hurting, breathing hard, but I can really do three more and I want to punk out at six. So I'm just like, I have to push through it, push through it. And then rep seven and eight and nine, I'm breathing harder and it really hurts, but I could do it. And that's the thing. Many people are underperforming because Going towards that peak is going to be painful and stressful, but you're really cheating yourself. So you have to practice pushing. That's why you have to do 30-day goals, 60-day goals, 90-day goals. Because once you say, I'm going to commit to this for 30 days, then there's really no punking out because in your mind, it's like, okay, there's an end. So you're not like, this is just going to go on forever because your mind is a trip. The things that will play on you. And then after you practice pushing, push some more. Because as you start breaking down these fears, because the first fear you break down will give you the courage, the tools, and the ability to break down the second fear. Then the third fear. Because what I am learning from consulting and talking to people is not how smart you are. It's not 
your resources is dealing with, and that's the reason I created the Hustler Mindset Project, is dealing with these fears where you can actually push forward and have the life that you want. Because most people are going out chasing money for the sake of chasing money, which is a fruitless pursuit after a while because it gets old just doing something to get money. You, you, there's got to be a greater purpose or you're just going to get bored, turn to drugs or do something self-sabotage. So you, you've done that. You're pushing. You made the commitment. And then after you, you get to where you want to be, you look back and you smile and you're like, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I don't know who said it, but it's like I think the, the greatest fear is uh, of the unknown. And that's what it boils down to because part of the components, and some people don't understand that the mental gym, the exercises are more important than a direct go to the store, buy item A, sell it for price B, get C, the result, or some. What I am hoping to impart to you is the ability for you to create something and to be a leader and a driver versus a follower because the leaders who created PayPal became fantastically rich to the point they don't have to do anything else they can get in life if they don't want to because they're financially set. You don't become set like that. And I mean, it could be something simple. There was a recent article about a young... You, a young lady, 15, she had these fish mermaid flip-flops. Flip-flops are a common everyday item. Everyone knows what they are. She put a 10%, maybe 12% new wrinkle on it. And her shoes are in Nordstrom and other places. And I think it was in the article that the company did like $1.2 million. She's 15. Even if this company goes out of existence in two years... And say it earns like five million after taxes, that leaves them an, a net of like three or two point eight. Properly invested at her age, she could become incredibly wealthy by thirty. So it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's just having the ability to push past your fears and get started. And that's what the core of this whole webinar podcast is. Number one, you have to get past your fears to get started and stay started. That is the biggest problem that I see. I see people who start off really well, they have success, and because of the lack of the immediate gratification loop, they stop and move on to something else. There's a few people that I have tracked for two years and because they're in every Facebook group that deals with reselling and they jump and they jump and they jump and they jump and I see them on YouTube and I see them asking questions and this person has experienced no growth in two years because they're jumping from thing to thing to thing because they haven't dealt with those fears. Then I see someone brand new who comes out, hits it hard, and this is someone that is not part of the hustler mindset. I have nothing to do with this person. They're in another group. Six months. Confronted some fears, paid attention, worked hard, and they're on their fourth month on Amazon FBA program, and the payout has reached three grand already because they took action and stayed with it. That is the thing. If you want to do storage auctions, you can make money. If you want to just do Craigslist alone, you can make money. If you just want to do eBay alone, you can. It's a matter of pushing to higher levels because the thing is if you're not growing you're dying and in a disruptive world and that's and make no mistake about it, that's what we live in this is a very disruptive world what worked for you last year may leave you broke this year so not only with pushing and growing it forces you to pay attention to the marketplaces if you notice i don't talk about print books anymore because i am a believer because they help me and I know they're helping others, that audiobooks and video tutorials are much more effective in helping people facilitate this change. Print books are nice. At some point, the books that are, that are currently audiobooks will be print books, but it's not a priority because the priority is to get to you the information that you can use and start making changes and being more effective in your life as soon as possible. Putting together a print book is a serious exercise. 
and it takes time and, you know, develop a team. But this is the hustler mindset. How can I get the information to the people in a great format and they can be effective? That's what happens when you push because a lot of people in my writing group think I'm nuts. It's like, hey, you're not on Kindle. Your new book's not on Kindle and your new books are not on Amazon. No, they're not. At some point they will be, but I have a plan for that. But the whole deal is I want you to be successful. I want you to be really, really successful. And I know that in creating the Hustler Mindset Project, I am relaying to you the steps that I did on the other side, the the dark side, the the thing that no one sees, because I could really just come up and say, yo, the reason I was uh, successful in the storage auction business is because I was smarter than everyone else. And that's not the truth. There was a lot of people out there that were way smarter than me, but I pushed myself and my partner to do new things. Everything did not work out. There was some stuff that was just a total goose egg. But when we created the ultimate garage sale, it was a winner. It was a total winner. It helped us move not only the smalls and reduced our dump cost, but a lot of those regular customers brought friends and family who bought bigger stuff. So the leveraged events that happened after that were awesome. I mean, it was a wonderful thing. And that's what happens when you confront your fears because the first few weeks when we had the ultimate garage sale, nothing happened. We're just sitting there. Nobody came. It was hot. I remember my partner was looking at me. Were you crazy? And, you know, it got to the point that she would go home and I'd just sit there. You know, I'm talking 10,000 square foot warehouse, $200 in a day, $300 in a day. It was very, very disparaging and disappointing. And I remember that first Saturday when it clicked. People came. There was a van of Hispanics. They came. They bought like $400 worth of stuff. They left. They came back with friends and trucks. And we did $1,500 in roughly three hours. That was our first $3,000 Saturday. And then it went on and got bigger and better. And then it got to the point where two and three grand were just bad days. So when I tell you that you can do this, it's not from a place of, Oh, I've never been there before. I've been through heartbreaking defeats. I've had my sanity questioned for some of the choices I made by friends and family. And I sit back and I can look back because I confronted my fears. Because when I wrote that first book, it was a it was a crapshoot. I was like, I don't know what the hell, you know, I'm going to do it because I got sick. And when you get sick, you start thinking about a lot of stuff you normally don't think about when you're healthy. I'm like, do I want to die and not have ever tried to write a book, which was something that I wanted to do for years and years and years. And then I did it and it was painful. But when I look back, it wasn't that bad. It's something that if I had something like this, the hustler mindset, something I could have did years earlier, but I didn't know because I allowed my fears of failure, ridicule and other things to really stop me because The book happened when I made the decision. I could have made that decision at any point in time. Only when I had enough proper motivation, being in a hospital bed, walking around with the help of friends and family because I couldn't go up a flight of stairs without being exhausted. Did it like, oh, yeah, you know, you might want to actually try that now. And I don't want you to get to that point when you're like, oh, this is it. No, I want you to like, hey, do it now. Chase your dreams and start eradicating those fears. So that's the deal. Listen to this podcast webinar three to four times. And the first time, just listen to it. The second time, listen to it. Third time, start planning out how you're going to confront your fears. All right, this is Glendy, and I will see you on the good side.